All right, let's jump straight into Lightroom Mobile and get started with tip number one. I couldn't tell you how many times I've tried to import a photo from my photos library into Lightroom Mobile, and when I press share, nothing comes up. It is one of the most frustrating things. However, there is a very simple and easy workaround. All you've got to do is come to the main library tab of Lightroom, and then down in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little photo with a plus symbol on it. You're going to press that, you want to hit from device, and now you open up your photos library, which is obviously super ideal from here. You can just tap everything you want to add in, hit the tick, and then you're good to go. All right, next on the list is turning on the histogram. Now, the histogram is going to give you all of your exposure and color data, and this makes sure that you can see your image 100% clearly. Not every single phone screen was created equally, and not always are you gonna be maxing out your brightness. So to have the histogram open is very key to make sure your image is actually looking well exposed. So to turn this on, you wanna open up a photo, and then in the top right-hand corner, press the little dots, and then go to view options. From here, you just wanna toggle this on, and now you can see the histogram display. Anything on the left-hand side is representing the dark parts of the image, and anything on the right-hand of the side of the histogram, I should say, is representing the bright parts of the image. Now, the idea here is to get this somewhat balanced. Of course, you wanna be making sure you still have a nice level of contrast in your image, but ideally, you don't just want everything squashed up on one side or the other, and if anything is touching the right or left side of the histogram, that means it's clipping, and when something is clipping, it means there's no data except for black or white pixels. Of course, black being the dark side and white being the light side. So turning this on and checking out the histogram can give you a really good idea of what you actually need to adjust in your photo to make sure it's looking balanced and beautiful. All right, with the histogram out of the way, let's dive into an automatic white balance tool. Let's say, for example, we didn't want this photo to look as blue and we sort of just wanted it to have neutral tones or just have an accurate white balance because I know I've made this photo incredibly blue, but let's say I didn't want it like that. All I'd have to do is open up color. And as you can see, my white balance is already customized. It's a little bit blue already. And then I can just open up this little dropper tool right here. And then I'm gonna come and find a location that should either be pure white or pure gray. Uh, let's say for this photo that is maybe right here, I'm then gonna hit the tick and that is automatically going to adjust my white balance, whether it needs to make it cooler or warmer or adjust the tint to make it a little bit more green or a little bit more purple, this is a really good tool. It's also ideal for when you have skin tones in your image to make sure that your skin tones are absolutely nailed. You can use this automatic white balance dropper. Does it work every single time? No, but about 95% of the time, this is gonna get you out of trouble just in case you shot with the wrong white balance. Okay, moving on to tip number four, and this is how to remove things in your image inside of Lightroom because for the longest time, I have no idea why. By the way, Lightroom is made by the same company that makes Photoshop, but the subject removal tool was just not good at all. So to do this, all you've got to do is open up your image and then in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little eraser. Tap on the eraser and then make sure generative AI is switched on. This way you'll get the best I guess, results, if you will. And then we're gonna zoom in on this little bush here. And now we have the pleasurable task of coloring that in. We're gonna let go. And now it's gotta go through the motions. It's gotta to connect to the cloud. It's gonna generate the AI, this, that, and the other. However, if you want the absolute best results, this is what it takes. All right, and just like that, generative AI has nailed it. If we zoom in right down here in the corner where that little bush was, and we hit before and after, we can see it is now completely gone. Now. Real quick, let's move on to tip number five because I just did it very quick before and afters. Let's uh, zoom out and head to a photo that actually has an edit on it. Let's say this one, for example. If we wanna check out a before and after and kind of be able to keep track of our edits to see how we've progressed, all you've gotta do is tap and hold on the screen and you'll see before, you let go and you see after. This is a really, really solid way to either see how much progress you've made or if you've pushed and pulled the sliders a little bit too far. If you've seen any of my Lightroom editing workflow breakdowns, you will know I use this all the time. So tap and hold, shows you before, let go, shows you where you're at. All right, next up on the chopping block is using presets to speed up your workflow. Of course, one of the hardest things to do is find good presets that actually work with your photos. If you'd like to go and check out either my master collection or my Lightroom room presets for iPhone, you can do so linked in the description. You can also use this discount code on either pack 
or both packs to get a cheeky little discount at checkout. But to open up your presets, all you've got to do is come into the bottom left-hand corner of Lightroom, tap on those little circles that overlap. And now once you've of course imported your presets, by the way, if you purchase any of my presets, I'll actually run you through exactly how you can add your presets into Lightroom Mobile. But if you purchase them, I'll show you exactly how to do that. So once you've got your presets imported, you can now just go through and tap on them. These presets here are from my iPhone collection, and this is definitely a dark and moody shot. But let's say we liked this preset, which I think actually works fairly well on it. If we wanted to increase or decrease our intensity of it, we can tap on this little line with the circle in the middle of it, and now we can dial it all the way back, or we can dial it all the way up. Probably wouldn't recommend to push it all the way to the max, as that's probably never ideal in any kind of preset or LUT environment. However, you can always increase it or decrease it slightly if you just wanna add a little bit or push it a little bit more. Let's say we wanted to add a little bit more, maybe let's get to 115 just there. Boom, just like that. And now we don't have to worry about editing the color. All we have to do is focus on editing the exposure. That's of course only if you've bought my Lightroom presets. A lot of other people that make presets change the exposure and change the white balance, which just completely ruins your shot. Yeah, that's a topic for another video. All right, next up on the list is adding blur to your shots. Now, I don't mean making the shot blurry, but I do mean making the background blurry while keeping your subject nice and sharp. And the way you can do this is opening up the editing tab and then tapping on blur. Now, you need a shot that has a very clear subject. So this shot here works perfectly. And then all you've got to do is increase the blur amount. Now, it will take a little bit of time for Lightroom to figure out where the subject is and get an accurate blur on your image. But once it has, you can then crank that blur slider all the way up. Once again, wouldn't recommend cranking it all the way up, but it's actually crazy how accurate this is and the effect that you can pull off. For example, we can actually change the look of the bokeh in the background. It probably doesn't work amazingly on this shot because there aren't any lights or you know certain bokeh balls in the background, but just overall adding a little bit more blur to the back of your shot is always a nice little addition, especially if you shot on an iPhone. All right, next up we have copy and pasting settings. I love this one as it speeds up your workflow like crazy. Let's say for example, we loved the edit on this photo and I think it looks great. Maybe I want to take this edit and put it onto this photo, for example. Maybe it might not be an ideal copy and paste, but you get the idea. If you've shot a load of photos in the same environment, this is definitely gonna come in handy. So let's head back to this photo here. We're gonna tap in the top right hand corner and then we're gonna come down to copy settings. Now here we get to choose what settings we wanna copy and paste. Depending on the edit, depending on the environment, depending on how similar the photos are that you're copying and pasting to and from, will depend on what you wanna copy. Let's say for example, we had everything we just wanted it the same. We're gonna hit the tick here. We can come back and now we're gonna find that photo, which is here. Then we're gonna come back into the top right hand corner, press those little dots and then we can hit paste settings. Now, of course, this might not have been the most ideal copy paste scenario, but like I said, if you have a load of photos from the same environment at the same time, this is such a big time saver. Don't individually edit every single shot. Now, just to add on to copying and pasting presets, if you really, really love an edit and it seems to work on every single photo you have, then go ahead and make it a preset. To do this, all you've got to do is come to the top right-hand corner, tap on the dots again, and then hit create preset. Now, once again, it's totally up to you what you do and don't want to include in your preset. For me personally, I never include anything in light except for the curve. I also never include the white balance inside of color, and then I never include detail, and of course, I never include masking. This is because every single shot you're going to shoot is different except if it was all shot back to back to back and even then you want to make sure that your presets are actually usable on other shots not just everything from one session so keep that in mind oh and by the way you can then go up to the top name your preset up here tap the tick in the top right hand corner and you've created a preset all right now something i love to do is to make my subject stand out from the image using a radial mask but inverting it so let me show you how it's done, okay? Now, by the way, you can add a vignette because that's essentially what we're doing, but this is a customly sized vignette that you can edit and remove parts from. So believe me, the control is just on another level when you do it like this. So what you wanna do is open up the masking tab and then hit the plus in the bottom right corner, hit radial gradient, draw over your subject. Now, right now it's currently on the subject, but on the left-hand side, there's a little box with a circle that's kind of flipped and inverted. We can press that and now we're selecting the outside. Then come into light and just start to drop the exposure a little bit and this starts to really help your subject pop from the image. You can do this with any mask and I find it one of the most handiest tools inside of Lightroom Mobile. Now, if you're shooting on a phone, chances are your images might be looking a little bit over sharpened. I personally don't like that look and I think it really gives off the effect that, hey, I shot it on an iPhone. So the way that I try to combat this and I still use this even on my professional high-end cameras 
is by dropping the clarity. I find this adds such a nice little touch and flair and a little bit of personality to a shot that you otherwise wouldn't get if you're just shooting from your phone and posting it. So what you wanna do is open up the effects tab right here, then over to effects, and then just drop the clarity maybe by like 10 to 15 and it just adds a little bit of a nicer feeling to your image. It softens those highlights a little bit and takes away all the over sharpening, maybe not all of it, but definitely a solid majority of it. I love doing this and I do it on nearly every single one of my shots. All right guys, and that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.